greatly your name to be praised. Amen. How many of you know that God is an awesome God and his love and his mercy endures forever? Oh, come on. Come on. I know you all can do better than that. I know the God is having a game today. And some people might be cheering much louder when people are making touchdowns. But I want to cheer for the one who woke us up this morning, started us on our way, gave us an activity of our men, and saved our souls and our bodies. Come on and give it up for the one and only Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God, and greatly is his name to be praised. to the Lord. I mean, because God is, is really a great and awesome God. And when I think back over my life and everything that the Lord has done for me and for you, I can't do anything but say, holy is the Lord. And although people might read all the accolades that you see and read about me, I don't look like what I've been through. See, God really is a healer. And it was three years ago, almost to the day that I was diagnosed being clear from having cancer, because five, three years ago I was there, diagnosed with breast cancer, and it was in September of 2015 that they finally told me that I had a clean bill of health. So let me tell you something, God really, really, truly is a healer and a deliverer. So I can't do anything but say, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Well, 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 it's good to be here. It's good to be here. And I'm so glad to be here with my brother, the Reverend Dr. Gregory Von Eason Sr., the senior pastor of Flipper Temple African Methodist Episcopal Church here on the student uh, nonviolent student movement boulevard. So let me just say, I'm gonna be on my best behavior today. I promise that I will. I promise that I will. Now my best behavior. May not be what you all expected to be good behavior, but I'm gonna try my very best to be on some type of good behavior. And so I also want to thank the worship leader who let me know that she was a star. <laughs> to the best sorority in the world, that the Delta City Bay Sorority Incorporated. I can sneak that in real quick. Thank you so much to the first lady of this house. Uh, Sister Linda Eason, thank you for that beautiful, beautiful introduction. I just love seeing you and your husband together. Y'all are a dynamic duo, and I just can't wait until you all will be serving in Episcopal service. Yes, I can. Great. Can't get another plug in. I've heard all the protocol. Y'all know we AMEs, we have a lot of protocol. But I know some of y'all are trying to get to that game and want to watch the game, so I promise I won't be too, too long in here today, but we will have a word from the Lord. To the Women's Day Choir, it was phenomenal. That choir was phenomenal this morning. I see you all did an awesome, awesome job. And while I cannot sing, I can make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And you all made me want to get up and just start singing with you today. So I thank you for that. To all the program participants, the Women's Day uh, chairs for this uh, year's um, Women's Day, to all the officers, members, and guests of this church, I think I have covered everybody. I do see, um, right in that one, two, three, four, I don't know, my eighth row back, I see the Cornelius family, and believe it or not, the, the first year that I pastored, they were actually members of the church that I pastored in Athens, Georgia, and it's so good to see the entire family sitting right there. Um, on those back pews. And then to my sweetheart, who I think they're taking pictures. You're not Facebook Live, are you? <laughs> oh, Lord God Almighty. But anyway, I never have to be halfway on my behavior because you never know what's going to come out of my mouth. But anyway, to my uh, sweetheart, college sweetheart, remember my college sweetheart. We older now, so you know, that's a different story. But to the love of my life, David Hagler Jr., who uh, blessed me together our union. We have four wonderful children. Two of them are with us today. And so I have my oldest daughter here. I have four children, Christopher, Kristen, Hannah, and Josh. And Kristen is my oldest daughter. Uh, Kristen right now is a freshman at Morehouse School of Medicine 
in the freshman class and this year. She was a merit scholar that had the white coat ceremony on Friday. And Kristen is the president of her freshman class. And one of the stand up. And then I have my youngest child, who is Joshua Hayden. Hey, Joshua, um, he is my little wise guy, and I have to talk about him because he's the last one in the house. Hey, to God. So anyway, Josh is the last one in the house. He's a senior at Martin Luther King High School, and Joshua will probably be attending Morehouse uh, College. Um, over in the AU Center, and he's also, believe me, he's a regional officer of the Jack and Jill himself, so he was elected to be regional team officer. He is a member of so many organizations. He said, I work hard for you, too. All right. okay. I just had to do that because, you know, that's my family, and I got to go home with those people. Amen. 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 Now, there is a word today from the Lord. I need you all to go to Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter. I will be reading from the 9th through the 12th verse of Scripture, and I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version of Scripture, that's Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Now, put up glasses, because I, you can't be cute and read at the same time, amen. All right, Ecclesiastes 2, Ecclesiastes 4, beginning at the 9th verse. Two can accomplish more than twice as much as one. For well, the results can be much better. If one falls, the other pulls him or her up. But if a man or woman falls when they are alone, they are in trouble. Also, on a cold night, two under the same blanket gain warm from each other. But how can one be warm alone? And one standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three is even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. And I'm going to read that first. Verse again, the number, the ninth verse. Two can accomplish more than twice as much as one, for the results can be much better. And this morning we're going to talk on the subject. Together we can make it. Can y'all repeat that with me? Say, together, together we can make it. Let us pray. Dear eternal and gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that the Holy Spirit is in this place. Now, oh God, I ask you to hide me behind the cross. Give me preaching power, oh God, that someone who came here may not leave the same way that they came, oh God, that someone came to hear a word that will empire, inspire, and cause them to go out and run on and see what the end is going to be. We thank you now, oh God, for every good and perfect thing you've done in our lives. Now, God, it's preaching time, and I need you to help give me preaching power. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen, amen. Now, let me tell y'all a little bit something. So when Pastor Eason reached out and said, I need you to preach Women's Day, several things crossed my mind. First of all, I knew that I was going to have a busy weekend, and I was trying to figure out if I would have time between all of my speaking engagements and even being in South Georgia down in Statesboro yesterday and other events I had yesterday to get back and have a word for you. The second thing that came to my mind was I didn't want to embarrass him, especially you know, since he's going to be the bishop or Lady Easton, because it's hard for me to preach you know, thematic sermons. And number three, I was like, what could I possibly, possibly say, given this current political, social, cultural climate that we find ourselves in? Would I stand up and tell y'all the truth that all hell is breaking loose? Or would I try to taper my remarks so as not to be so political? <laughs> then it dawned on me that there was way too much at stake for me not to use every opportunity afforded to me as the clarion call to get things done. And anybody who knows me and asks me to speak already know everything there is to know about me. You already know that I am a social activist, freedom fighter, will tell the truth, and baby, Harry Tubman. So, I'm speaking today from a place of justice, equality, and service. So whether we are focusing on our seniors, whether we are pushing for equal wages for black women, training and education mentorship for our youth, or fighting a systemic racist system that still does not value or empower black flesh, it is paramount that we not only address issues that are at our hand, but we tackle them salingly in this African American community. This is why your theme, Purposeful Women of God Working Together in Love and Harmony, 
gives us the blueprint to deal with each other and the enormity of issues that face the African American community. Right. Now, in Georgia, there are 10 million black folk that live in Georgia. 30%, no, 10 million people live in Georgia. 30% of those are black. That means roughly 3 million black people live in Georgia, right? That's a lot of black folk in a little state like Georgia. Now, with that, we have $64 billion worth of buying power. Somebody say $64 billion. Which is larger than the state budget. Did y'all know that? So let me go someplace with this. So if we have $64 billion worth of buying power by ourselves, Yet, we see the state fail to create a minority contracting system. We fail to see African American schools on certain type, certain sides of town getting the equality that they need. And yet, our voting rights are totally and continuously being eroded. What is it that we need to do in this present age? We can't just talk about situations we have to be about. It. But let me just be very clear. I've heard some people say that the black community is not where it should be. Well, let me just be clear. As a race, we have made significant gains. Our teenage pregnancy uh, average is on the low for the first time in, in years. Black women collectively have more education than any other demographic group based on our population. We actually have more young black men enrolled in college than in prison. Now, I'm not saying we don't have a lot of them in prison. I'm just saying we have more in college than we actually have in prison. And then we have a society that still likes to base things on uh, misconstrued notions such as black people are lazy, unintelligent, and dangerous, all of which are lies. Because we are not the ones that stole us from a country. We are not kidnappers, we are not rapists, and we are not murderers of whole generations of people. That would be somebody else. I'm trying to do the best I can without getting in trouble already. But every day, we see something brand new playing itself out on the television. I have a friend named Attorney Ben Crump, and I don't know if many of y'all know Ben Crump, but now he's representing someone named Bolton James who was killed in his apartment. And Ben Crump said this on television. He said, first I had to represent somebody who was killed while walking while black. Then I had to represent somebody who was killed driving while black. But now it's gotten to the point I have to defend somebody who's home minding their own business trying to live while being black. Something is going on in America, uh, Reverend Rosetta, that we need to address. We have law enforcement that will kill us, and then we have young black people who will kill each other. Now, let me be very clear. I'm not saying what some other people said during a funeral or eulogy, but we do have some situations going on. All lives matter, and black lives in particular matter. Every black life that we have matters, and we need to work together to make sure that every life is protected from the birthplace to the grave. Right. But we do a lot of lip service, and no Okay, y'all not with me this morning, but y'all gonna, you gonna catch up in about a few minutes. A few, year, a few years ago, I decided, because I got sick and tired of being sick and tired, that I would run for elective office. And it wasn't that I didn't have anything else to do, because remember, I had four children. I had plenty to do. And I had a husband who was active duty in the military and who wasn't even stationed in Atlanta at that time. But I kept saying, if not me, then who, and if not now, then when? Because what I was noticing was things were beginning to happen in our community that needed to be addressed. And then last year, because our voting rights were being infringed upon over and over again, I decided to run for Secretary of State. Now let me explain something to you. Sometimes you can run to win, which I did run to win, but I didn't. But you can also run to have an impact to change the conversation. You cannot be afraid to step up, even if you're going against a system. And I knew that the person that I was running against, Dr. E. Said, was a system. Why do I say that? Because his family had been uh, duly entrenched in the state of Georgia. His great-grandfather had been the governor. Uh, they started the Supreme Court here in Georgia. They started the law school at the University of Georgia. And three counties are named behind his family. Battle County and several other counties, not to mention Atlanta, before they had changed their name, was named after his great great aunt. Martin Luther was his great great aunt. So I knew I was going up against a system, but I was not afraid to go up against a system 
Because I knew that there was work that needed to be done. Now the problem sometimes is when you have courage, everybody else is not going to have courage with you. And there was some folk in this church that looked like me and you who was helping the other side. But I just want y'all to know today that everybody our color ain't our kind. And all our skin folk ain't our temper. When Donald Trump ran for office, that was a bad idea. That's why we voted at 96%. It was other people now who run around screaming and acting like they're crazy and the sky is falling, who are falling out voting for the other side. See, black women have always held the world up, not just America, but black women have held the world up. We have been the butchers, the beggars, and the cowards, the beggars, and we have to get into a position that we don't compete a few years ago, I preached a sermon called Little Girls Compete But Grown Women Empower. Did y'all catch that? <laughs> Little girls compete but grown women empower. And black women, you gotta stick together. Do you know why? Because every time there is a movement, black men, for some reason, either black men or white women go to the top of the movement while black women do all the work. But we are here to start notice on y'all today that it is our time and our season, and from the top of the battle, from Devon all the way down to the bottom, black women gonna get our just due in 2018. Black women, we understand the necessity of doing what you gotta do. So it doesn't matter if Dr. King was out getting things done. We knew there were some black women in the kitchen and, and selling fish dinner so that our children could go to college and that black people could vote. See, we, we, we understand all that very well. We also understand it's the proverb that says that if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Did y'all catch that? See, sometimes we got to go back to our African proverbs. We done been Americanized, Europeanized too much that we forget who and what we are. We are the very creation of God. So, to go fast, you go alone. But to go far, you go together. So we don't have the luxury right now trying to be the head Negro in charge. And we can't be walking around acting like we want to be the one to be seen. Look at me, look at me. I have this title, I have this position, because some of y'all can have a title or position or think you are the leader, but ain't nobody following you. So if you are the leader, nobody's following you, all you're doing is taking a walk. Now, I'm just trying to help somebody out of here this morning. We don't have a luxury now to sit around playing ring around the rosy, because too much is going on in our community. We have challenges now. Just think about this. What, some of us now, some of y'all in this room, you did protest with King, or you marched, or you both boycotted, or you fought for voting rights, or you fought for public policy in court battles and education in the 50s and the 60s. So why is it that we're repeating history and dealing with the same issues in 2018? Something is not right. See, my grandmother fought for the right to vote. So I didn't think that in 2018, I would not have to be fighting the vote for the right to vote for my granddaughter. See, something is wrong all of a sudden. But what has happened is we have gotten into our two or three car garage homes. Say it. Say it. Uh -huh. Gay communities with our luxury cars and our college, college pedigree and all this alphabet soup behind our names. You know, PhD, ABD, CBA, all this stuff. And what has happened is we have forgotten that we rise and fall together. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh Lord, we're playing. <laughs> There's trouble in the land. And every day, I'm telling y'all, seems more egregious than the day before. And some of us, they like to say all this stuff, stay woke. How you gonna stay woke when you're not even woke at all? You first of all, stay woke, you got to be woke, you got to wake up so you can stay woke. Yes. Racism, sexism, classism, homophobia, and white nationalism are on the rise. And then we have number 45, a.k.a. the President of the United States, a.k.a. the lunatic, who is sitting up late at night and early in the morning tweeting out crazy stuff that makes
makes no sense and it keeps us all confused. See, because if they can keep us in a perpetual state of confusion, then we'll be sidetracked and won't know what to tackle at what time. But how many of y'all know that the devil is a liar? And it doesn't matter who's in the White House, and you know who sits and owns the cop on a thousand hills, and as long as God is still God, then it doesn't matter who occupies 1500 Pennsylvania Avenue. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was not really an act of God, because guess what happened? By this lunatic being elected, I have seen more black folk praying <laughs> than I have seen in years. I have seen more black folk rushing in the vote, getting up, going out the vote, talking about politics, watching MSNBC, CBS, NBC. I'm not texting CNN. I ain't never seen black folk carrying on like this. This is a picture that I wasn't even born then. I'm just watching the backdrops. What happened back then? So obviously, he, you know, he might be sent by God. Who knows? But the only thing we all can agree on is that man is crazy. All right. So, this country has also seen a lot of sexual misconduct and craziness. The Me Too movement has literally swept from the streets, from Hollywood to the White House, and now they're considering putting a man on the Supreme Court who's going through hearings now who supposedly sexually assaulted someone when they were in the high school. Now, I'm going to just help y'all men out for a minute. The men, for one minute. See, sometimes when we were growing up, people thought it was cute that men flirted and touched and did things they did in that generation. And sometimes women were assaulted or abused and didn't say anything because you were taught to try to be quiet or something happened to you, you might have caused it to happen to yourself. But I want you to know that rape and sexual assault is never the part of the woman. I don't care if she got on a mini skirt and you can see her uterus. I do not care. You do not put your hands on no body if they have told you no. No, 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 yes, Somebody say, stay focused, stay focused and work together. And work together. Yeah. I'm going to say it 
say it again because I don't believe y'all really caught that down and y'all shunned them. Say stay focused. Stay focused. And work together. And work together. Those are the key words. See, stay focused, focus, focus, focus. See, sometimes we get distracted by stuff that make no sense. We'll see the shiny nickel in the corner. Next thing we know, we done got off our game plan. But the reason black people were able to accomplish everything that they accomplished during the time they accomplished it is that they stayed focused. They did not allow distractions. They did not allow water hoses and dogs being sick on them and people talking about them and spitting on them at counters where they wanted to uh, desegregate to get them off their game. You have to stay focused. And now with this generation, if somebody call you out your name or say something to you, you all up in arms, you don't lost your mind, and you don't lost your focus. But the tactic of work together, not work solo, together, work together. Now, let me tell you why I'm saying we've got to work together. We have entirely too many organizations operating in their own silo. What do I mean by that? Okay, we got the Deltas and the AKs and the Gamma over here on this side. Zeta Zeta. Then you got the Alphas and the Capitals and the Megas over here. Then you got the Eastern Stars and the Masons over here. Then you got the AMEs and the Baptists and Church of God and Christ and the Holy Pentecostal Movement of God, you know, cooking fried chicken name of church on this side. And then what happens is everybody is on their own mission, but nobody is working together. And this is how they mess us up because they distract us and we distract ourselves. Because we're always trying to be more important than the next group, not realizing that they're stripped in numbers. And the scripture tells us that wherever two or three touch and agree, and the scripture I use is one said that when you're band together, you can't break a three chord string. But instead, we want to one up somebody all the time. And while you one up somebody, our children are confused because all they're listening to is crazy music. Now, I know it's not because. Back in our day, we did too, because everybody likes to mind the game and sexual healing. Yeah. <laughs> my generation like Luke. Some of y'all don't catch that. Some of y'all too old to know it. And those in my age group, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We're talking about Luke. So when the young people listen, but the difference is we were rooted and grounded, and people went to church. And even if we went to the club and party all night, we knew we still had to get out behind them on Sunday morning and go to church. And let me tell you something, some of y'all now will come to church and leave your children in the bed because they're not too late. <laughs> the devil is laughing. If I'm getting up going to church, everybody in my house going to church unless she's going to be about to die. And if you think about that, then we all go into the mercy room. That means something's really wrong. No, no, we're, not, we're not doing all that. That, this is why everybody's acting like they don't have no good sense. And then we want to say, well, you know, everybody's not a Christian. Now, well, you may not be a Christian, but if you live in my house, for me and my house, we don't serve the Lord. When you get to me to serve the God of that's fine. Go you get yourself a house and pay your own bills, but everybody's going to be all right. Give me some Jesus. Give me some Jesus. Okay, so we got point number one. What was point number one? I need to make sure y'all wrote that down. That's so good. Flip a tip of y'all on point. Point number two is we can do anything. Say, we can do anything. We can do anything. Now, do y'all believe that or y'all just said it because I told you to? Well, let me just help y'all. We can do anything. Because I want y'all to think about that over the past 200 years, we have been historically, systematically, and racially oppressed at every turn. We know that black people make less uh, of a dollar than white people do of the same dollar. We already know that the criminal justice system is disproportionately incarcerating more black people than white people for the same or lesser crimes. We already know that there are greater health disparities in the black community and even more prevalent in the South. We already know that we got to be 10 times better than everybody else to climb up the corporate ladder. We get all of that. We get it. We get it. We get it. But in spite of all that, we have the greatest minds that have ever stepped on the face of the earth. Do you know how I know that? Because we're still children of Africa. Africa is still the motherland because all life resonates again in Africa. And we feel pyramids that people can't even represent to this day. So this tells you that we can do anything. We are teachers and nurses and engineers and scientists and entrepreneurs and carpenters. I mean, we all know how to get together and take care of each other. And before we even became dependent on the government system, if somebody in your 
your neighbor who was hungry, who fed your neighbor, you made sure you didn't have food to eat. First of all, you knew who your neighbor was. If not, not you have some booze in these gay communities, you don't know who even lived beside you, let alone down the street. But the key about falling down is not to stay down when you get down. 
Because if you can look up, you can get up. And I need y'all to understand today that we have had some curveballs thrown at us as African Americans, but every single time we have regrouped and got ourselves together and got our people together so we can go to the next level. And so this morning I want you to know there's nothing, nothing, nothing too hard for God. We've got to trust God just like our ancestors did. Just like the Harriet Tubman's, just like the Sojourner Truth, the Frederick Douglass, the Richard Allen, the Henry Manil Turner, the W.E.B. Du Bois, the Ida B. Wells, well, the Marcus Darling, Malcolm X, Martin King, and the Fatty Luke Hammond. We've got to trust God. Because every last one of these people, what did they do? They trust God. And if you go back and read any of their writings, all of them mention God in what they do, even their speeches, because they understood that God was the foundation of why they could do what they did. And even when they was in the Bible and crying on the sides of the ocean, they would cry out unto God, why has thou forsaken me? And then others said, we've got to trust God and we can sing the Lord's song even in a foreign land. So some of y'all got to remember that even though we were in this land that we built that's not, you know, a foreign land, we've got to remember to sing the Lord's song. And then we've got to be like Fatty Lou Hamer. We've got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. And then we're going to get up off our behind and do what needs to be done. But before I sit down, a lot of y'all in this room are going to have to start being like Harry Tubman. And why do I choose Harry Tubman? I'm glad you asked. So Harry Tubman is known as being the leader of the Underground Railroad. And she led a whole lot of slaves into freedom. But one thing she did is she had a great memory and she also carried a pistol. Now the pistol was also to fight things that were out in the wilderness, to shoot snakes or, you know, kill bears or, you know, people were after them, like the slave catchers. But she also kept her pistol for one specific reason. She said, for those who got out when they was in the middle of running away, who all of a sudden got afraid because it didn't look like what they thought it was going to look like. And thought they was going to turn around and jeopardize everybody else who was trying to get to the promised land. See, sometimes people who look like us will mess up and get us here. Yeah. <laughs> 